the axons that bring touch information from the skin back to the central nervous system are called primary afferent axons. So the word afferent is just a general term that means <clears throat> something coming into the brain or the spinal cord from uh, outside. So it's a general term that means sort of a sensory receptor. But in this case, we're specifically talking about the touch receptors from the skin. So these axons come from these cells called dorsal root ganglia. And so you can see the dorsal root ganglia here in this picture. This is, of course, a cross section of the spinal cord. Here's the spinal cord. Um, and this is the dorsal side. This is the ventral side. So these axons that come in to the dorsal side, we call the dorsal roots. And so this bump here, this uh, uh, lump contains the cell bodies of the neurons that produce these axons. And so we call it the dorsal root ganglion. Um, a ganglion, remember, is a, a cell or a group of cells in the peripheral nervous system. So technically we're in the peripheral nervous system here. Um, so these neurons are kind of uh, unusual. They have uh, just one uh, process. So these are called unipolar neurons. This, this red dot here kind of represents the cell body of a single dorsal root ganglia neuron and that little stalk that comes out that is the process and then that that process branches and goes two directions one we call the the central process the other one we call the peripheral process so the the peripheral process or, or peripheral axon goes out into the skin and it ends in the skin at one of these receptors so in this case this is a bacinian corpuscle so that is the peripheral end of that dorsal root ganglion axon again there are no specialized receptor cells that synapse with these these neurons they they themselves are the receptors and so the axon from the bacinian corpuscle forms part of a spinal nerve so there's other axons from other receptors um, also these spinal nerves can contain motor axons that come out of the ventral roots which we'll talk about later but the spinal nerve is where these axons come toward the spinal cord. Um, the cell body is here in the dorsal ganglia, but the, the, if, if this sensory receptor is activated, remember, so if something touches this corpuscle, an action potential will be generated and travel all the way up the spinal nerve to the, the dorsal ganglion uh, itself, but it actually just bypasses the cell. So in other words, the cell body uh, in this case, doesn't really participate in the actual um, propagation of the signal. The axon, uh, the action potential just goes right past the cell, the cell body, and then goes into the spinal cord through those dorsal roots. So this axon continues on past the dorsal root ganglion and goes into the spinal cord. Um, so again, these these neurons are kind of kind of special that way. Um, and then the peripheral process of these of these cells. Uh, come in different varieties. So there are basically four categories of primary afferent axons um, and they're categorized by their diameter and by their degree of myelination. So how much myelin uh, is surrounding the axon. The A-alpha, uh, these, these A-alpha group axons are the thickest so they have a diameter uh, between 13 and 20 microns and uh, have the most myelin and then uh, they go down from there. So A betas are thinner, um, followed by A deltas. And then at the very uh, end, you have C fibers. C fibers have very thin diameters, so they're all the way down to 0.2 microns. So, so 200 nanometers uh, across is would be a typical or uh, a small C fiber. Um, and they have no myelin, so, so C fibers are completely unmyelinated. Uh, the effect of diameter and myelin, we already know because we talked about action potential conduction velocity. So you probably can guess that the main difference between these axons other than uh, their physical size is the action potential conduction velocity. So down here, these are the conduction velocities for different types of axons. The A alphas are the fastest. They, um, so all the way up to 120 meters per second um, is how long it takes it. Uh, how fast an action potential travels along one of these axons. Um, they get slower as they get thinner and less myelin. Remember that's because positive current just leaks out of the axon membrane and it, it makes it harder for an action potential to propagate. 
And so a C fiber has the slowest action potentials of all, all the way down to, to between 0.5 and 2 meters per second. Um, and, and it's hard to overstate how slow that is for an action potential. Um, you know, you can you can walk faster than 0.5 meters per second if you tried hard enough. Um, and these are very long axons too. So remember that the the this center receptor here is somewhere out in the skin, and this dorsal ganglion cell is right by your spinal cord. So if this is let's say in your foot, um, if you're if you're tall, then this axon, the total length of this axon, could be several feet in length. And so when we're talking about something moving up 0.5 meters per second, it can take you know up to a second for that to get to the brain. Um, and so the different types of axons, because they uh, conduct information at different speeds, are also used for different types of sensations. So the A-alphas, uh, their axons come from basically stretch receptors and, and uh, touch receptors in the muscle. So these are not really uh, touch receptors from your skin. They detect the, the tension and length of muscles and that's really important for proprioception. That's your, again, your sense of where your limbs are relative to the rest of your body, um, whether they're, they're experiencing tension or not. Um, we'll talk about those more later when we get to the, uh, we talk about the motor systems. Your, the main, uh, the bulk of your touch receptors from your skin are these A-betas. So A-betas are the main, uh, the main touch receptors from the skin. They're kind of medium fast. Um, and then uh, the A deltas and C fibers, their main function is pain and to some extent also temperature and itch. So they do not uh, really produce a lot of information about touch. So we'll come back and talk about these guys later. Um, now the, the central aspect of each of these axons, if we go back, um, again, forms the dorsal root and then the axon enters the spinal cord. So the spinal cord uh, is where all somatosensory information, at least from the body, uh, comes in. So like I said, these spinal nerves are what carry the primary afferent axons back to the spinal cord. And uh, each one is, again, even though it's mixed with motor nerves, comes from a different part of the body. And each nerve, uh, remember we talked about the anatomy of the spinal cord earlier, and we said that the spinal cord has different segments which are based on the vertebrae that they're surrounded by. So the cervical spinal cord is surrounded by the cervical uh, vertebrae. Uh, thoracic spinal cord is surrounded by the thoracic vertebrae. Lumbar spinal cord surrounded by lumbar vertebrae. Sacral uh, vertebrae surround the sacral spinal cord. Although, uh, again, the actual spinal cord ends right about here. So somewhere in the middle of the lumbar uh, spinal cord spinal column is actually the end of the spinal cord so the the sacral spinal cord is way down is right here whereas the sacral vertebrae are way down here so we still call it the sacral spinal cord though because the nerve that comes out of the sacral spinal cord leaves the spinal column um, between the sacral vertebrae um, so again this this is s1 so that's the first sacral vertebra and this blue line here is the first sacral spinal nerve, but it enters the spinal cord way up here. Um, and this, this region here where it's just a bundle, bundle of axons um, surrounded by vertebrae, we call that the caudal equino. So each one of these nerves uh, goes out to the body and it innervates some region of skin. And the region of skin that a given nerve innervates uh, or gets uh, in, uh, touch information from, we call a dermatome. And the dermatomes are laid out pretty much in the same way that they're laid out in the spinal cord. So uh, the cervical dermatomes are the parts of skin that are innervated by the cervical spinal nerves. And they start at the, you know, the back of your head uh, and then go down. So C2, C3, C4, all the way down to uh, C8, I guess. And the, the dermatomes are bands of skin that go all the way down. So for example, um, C7 here, you can see, uh, is a dermatome that goes starts in the middle of your back and goes all the way down the, the back of the arm. Uh, and then uh, the same is true of all the rest. So most of them uh, are pretty much where you would expect them to be. The cervical dermatomes 
are at the top because the cervical spinal cord is at the top and so on. Um, it might look weird to see the lumbar nerves, though. The lumbar dermatomes go down the, the legs. You might expect because the lumbar spinal cord or spinal column is uh, close to the lower back that the lumbar dermatomes would only be around the lower back. but And they are, but then you can see they also go all the way down to the ends of the feet. Um, the reason that that is the case is because, uh, again, humans are weird. We walk around on two legs, but we are descended from animals that walked around on four legs. So if you were walking around on four legs, your, uh, your spinal segment and your dermatomes would line up better. So the, the, uh, the lumbar dermatomes would be sort of uh, anterior to the sacral dermatomes. The sacral dermatomes are on the backs of the legs and kind of the buttocks and general region. So um, that's why those are arranged that way. Uh, and you might notice too that there are no dermatomes around the face. That is because the touch receptors from the face do not go into the spinal cord. They go into the brainstem, um, which we will talk about uh, in a minute. Uh, so now let's talk about the central touch pathway. So once these uh, primary afferent axons enter the spinal cord, they uh, form the central touch pathway. Uh, these are this is just the pathway from the the dorsal root ganglia to the brain. So again, the dorsal root ganglia neurons have the axons that come from the skin and go into the spinal cord, and so they enter uh, into the dorsal side of the spinal cord from those dorsal roots and they enter at the dorsal horn, um, and then they, they usually branch. So usually there's a, a, a collateral at, right after the dorsal uh, horn, uh, and some of those collaterals go and synapse onto interneurons in the spinal cord. So this is just an interneuron in the spinal cord. So it, it's important for communication within the spinal cord. But for the signal that's gonna go to the brain, there's another branch that goes up the spinal cord through this part of the spinal column called the dorsal column. So, so the dorsal column is just the white matter, the bundle of axons on the dorsal side of the spinal cord. So those axons uh, then project all the way up to the medulla where they synapse onto neurons uh, in the medulla in a region called the dorsal column nucleus. So the dorsal column nucleus is the next step in the pathway. Um, it's worth pointing out though that these, these uh, dorsal root ganglion axons are even longer than we just said. So again, the, the peripheral end of this axon goes all the way out to, to your skin, whereas the central part goes into your spinal cord and goes all the way up to the medulla, which is up here, way up at the, the base of the brain. So again, these axons can, can if they're, let's say, coming from uh, a distal part of your body, like your foot, uh, the total length of this axon can be almost the entire length of your body. So, so from the, the soles of your feet all the way to basically the, the base of your head, that's how long these axons are. It's the, they're the longest axons in your body. Um, but the dorsal, root, uh, the dorsal column nuclei are their targets and they're in the medulla. And then the dorsal column neurons have axons that come out and they immediately cross over. So this neuron here has an axon that crosses from one side to the other. So this is a the left side of the body, but this axon crosses over and goes to the right side of the body. So we say that they have a contralateral projection. And so their axons come out, they go through this white matter structure called the medial lemniscus, and then they synapse onto neurons in the thalamus. So here we are at the thalamus again. Remember, this is an important relay structure for a lot of the sensory systems. Each sensory system has its own part of the thalamus that it gets input from. In the case of the somatic sensory system, it's this region right here called the uh, ventral posterolateral nucleus, or just the VPN. And so it's right here um, in, you know, close to the, uh, the front kind of, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the back and, and ventral side of the thalamus. And so those neurons then, uh, project up to the primary somatosensory cortex, uh, which happens to be in the parietal lobe um, up here. So these, these neurons send axons straight up to the parietal lobe, which is where the primary somatosensory cortex can be found. 
Um, now I mentioned that the face does not have any dermatomes from the spinal nerves because all the touch receptors from the face go in through one of the cranial nerves, specifically cranial nerve five, which is called the trigeminal nerve. Um, it's called the trigeminal nerve actually because it has three branches and those branches go to different parts of the face, but um, the, the central axons from the trigeminal nerve uh, axon or trigeminal nerve neurons enter uh, through the cranial nerve five and then they synapse onto neurons uh, also in the uh, actually in the the pawns in the trigeminal nucleus so this is the trigeminal nucleus here which is again in the pawns right underneath the cerebellum and then the trigeminal nucleus neurons have axons that come out cross to the opposite side again just like in the uh, the uh, the dorsal column um, and project again also up to the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and then those neurons project to somatosensory cortex although a slightly different region of the somatosensory cortex <clears throat> which we'll we'll see later um, this is actually uh, one of the reasons why your your face uh, you know if you have let's say an injury to the spinal cord so if you had a spinal cord injury here in the cervical part of your cord you would lose touch sensation from your body from that point down so if you had an injury let's say at cervical spinal cord 8 um, and the spinal cord was transected you might lose all touch information from basically T1 on down so the first thoracic uh, spinal nerve all the way down so which is which corresponds to your uh, your upper chest shoulders and sort of neck area so if you had an injury there you might still be able to feel uh, sensation in the neck and shoulders perhaps most of the arm um, but no matter how high you had an injury it would not affect the your ability to feel uh, touch sensation from the face because those uh, axons come in through a different pathway but they're they're their target is the same so it doesn't matter which uh, whether you're talking about from the body or the face all touch information goes to somatosensory cortex specifically the opposite side so again a, a um, uh, information from the left arm for example uh, goes to the right side of the brain and vice versa but the somatosensory cortex is the, the ultimate target of um, the somatosensory system just like the visual cortex is the ultimate uh, uh, the first level of the brain that processes visual information uh, the primary somatosensory cortex fills that role for the somatosensory system um, and that is what we will talk about next time